The Second World War is filled with what ifs. What if the Allies would never have invaded during D-Day? What if the atomic bomb had never been used against Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Would the war have continued on? Would there still be a state of conflict originating from this today? But one of the most prevalent and shocking what ifs relates to the First World War and an incident which could have led to the life of Adolf Hitler being over when he was in the trenches. But the actions of a British soldier who spared Adolf Hitler was shocking. Private Henry Tandy was the most highly decorated British private of World War I, but his actions, although would have been considered noble on any other German enemy, could have changed the whole world if he had been more ruthless with his rifle. Join us today as we look at the man that should have shot Hitler. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. At the outbreak of the First World War, Adolf Hitler was living inside of Munich and he enlisted in the Bavarian army. Despite being an Austrian citizen, he was allowed to serve within the German army and this was probably an admin error that allowed him to slip between the fingers of those who were noticing. He should have been sent to Austria and he then served as a dispatch runner on the Western Front in France and Belgium and he would spend a significant amount of his time at the regimental headquarters in Fawn et Weps. This was well behind the front lines and he would be decorated for bravery following the first battle of Ypres. During the Battle of the Somme, he would be injured as he was wounded in the left thigh when a shell exploded near to him in the dispatch runner's dugout. He would then spend the final months of the war recovering when he was wounded and he was temporarily blinded in a mustard gas attack and there he found out that Germany had surrendered and ultimately lost the war. Hitler would describe the First World War as the greatest of all his experiences and would be praised by his superior officers for his bravery and he would play on this throughout his rise to power. His statements was a slight exaggeration, as he was completing work which wasn't the most dangerous behind the front lines, but there was one incident in which he could have been shot by a British soldier, and possibly should have, and of course the repercussions of this incident would be huge. Henry James Tandy was born in Leamington in Warwickshire, and he didn't have the easiest life, as his father was a former soldier, and his mother passed away, when he was just young. Because of this, Tandy spent a lot of his childhood in an orphanage before he worked inside of a hotel as a repairman. But Tandy then in 1910 enlisted to become part of the Green Howards Regiment and he was then posted to the 2nd Battalion in January 1911 and he trained in South Africa and Guernsey. But when the First World War broke out, Tandy would be involved in the Battle of Ypres in October 1914 and he was wounded in October 1916 during the Battle of the Somme. He would be wounded again during the Battle of Passchendaele, before he was, in 1918, transferred to become part of the Duke of Wellington's West Riding Regiment. On the 28th of August 1918, Tandy was involved in a number of bombing raids on the German trenches, and he would lead one of them. But as some of his troops were delayed, Tandy would run across no man's land, would bomb a trench himself. His actions resulted in 20 prisoners being taken and many members of the enemy being killed and he was then awarded the Distinguished Conduct Medal. He would be awarded the Military Medal on the 13th of March 1919 and he would rescue wounded men who were under fire the day before and then led a bombing raid into the German trenches returning even more prisoners. He would also then be awarded the Military Cross when he was just 27. He was still a private, and then, during a counter-attack on a French town, he was halted by machine gun fire. He crawled forward and spotted the gun position, then using his Lewis gun team, got rid of the machine gun that was firing upon him. He would then restore a bridge, also went under enemy fire, and despite being surrounded by the enemy that evening, he led a bayonet charge that forced 37 of his enemies to be driven away towards the rest of the company. But the incident in which Henry Tandy would be mostly remembered for involved a young Adolf Hitler. This took place on the 28th of September 1918, and whilst Henry Tandy was serving with the 5th Duke of Wellington Regiment, he came across a tired and weary German soldier, who had incorrectly wandered into Tandy's line of fire. This enemy soldier was wounded and looked stunned, and this soldier didn't even raise his weapon at Tandy and the British forces. This man of course was Adolf Hitler, 
and this brief interaction could have changed the course of history forever. Henry Tandy, when he came across the young German soldier, chose not to shoot, and he would, in doing this, spare the life of Adolf Hitler. He could have easily shot Hitler, and possibly should have, as he was a messenger and a key cog in the Germans' military operations, and messengers were seen as a valuable asset. But Tandy could also have taken Hitler in as a prisoner of war, and then he would have been processed as a POW in the correct channels. But Hitler would later recognise Henry Tandy in the chance he gave him, as he came across a newspaper report about the British soldier being awarded the Victoria Cross, and Hitler then took a clipping of the article. But in 1937, following his rise to power, Hitler then became aware of a painting depicting the Green Howards, and in this was Henry Tandy, who was carrying a man who was wounded at a crossroads northwest of Menin. The painting was a sketch, and one member of Hitler's staff managed to get a large photo of the painting. Hitler then identified Henry Tandy, and in 1938 when Neville Chamberlain, the British Prime Minister, visited Hitler's mountain retreat the Burkhoff, Chamberlain asked about the painting. Hitler replied with, That man came so near to killing me, that I thought I should never see Germany again. Providence saved me from such devilish accurate fire, as though English boys were aiming at us. Hitler then told Chamberlain to pass his best wishes on to Henry Tandy, and Chamberlain then did this. When he called the household of Tandy, a nine-year-old child answered the phone, before Tandy then took the call. But Tandy remained a military man, and served in Gibraltar, Egypt and Turkey, before he was discharged from the army in 1926. Henry Tandy died at the age of 86 in 1977, but he was a man who would live to regret his decision not to shoot Adolf Hitler, and he believed that he could have changed history forever with one gunshot, or a simple arrest that would have changed the Second World War, and could have saved the lives of millions of people. The Second World War in Europe was obviously caused by Hitler's Nazi ideologies and beliefs, and his desire to expand the German Empire, and Tandy's actions could have prevented a lot of this. He would later state when the Luftwaffe bombed his hometown of Coventry that, if only I had known what he would turn out to be, when I saw all of the people and women and children he had killed and wounded, I was sorry to God I let him go. Henry Tandy's encounter with Adolf Hitler could have obviously changed history, and his actions with hindsight could have changed the course of the Second World War, and it may have not even happened. But he obviously wouldn't have known that the person he spared would go on to become one of the most evil dictators that history has ever seen. Tandy, when he refused to shoot and let Hitler return to his German trench, would believe he was doing the right thing, but his actions that day had large repercussions. Who would have thought that such a sparing action would result in the slaughter of millions? Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.